In medical practice, we're often confronted with situations where we can help patients. Sometimes things also go wrong, but there are not so many situations where we can really help patients, where we can really make miracles happen. We put together a few cases where patients really had guardian angels. And with me, we have Professor Irene Lang. She is the head of our uh, uh, pulmonary hypertension outpatient clinic, and she's also head of our invasive program. And she is probably one of the few left true general cardiologists with a huge experience in cardiology. And uh, she's collected a number of patients where treatment really made a difference. And we're happy to have her present a case of such a miracle. Thank you, Tommy. <laughs> Um, I've brought a, a big file today of a patient uh, with a very remarkable response to treatment, as you already announced. And it's a 64-year-old female who had very recent onset dyspnea and was um, actually always uh, a happy, funny woman. But then when her problems started, uh, she, she consulted a, a neurologist, she consulted a psychiatrist, she consulted an internal medicine specialist and it, it took about two years to get to see us. And then the diagnosis was major depressive illness and her previous surgeries and not much of an idea of what was the problem. So this is her physical examination. There was a loud P2, that's all, which is, which is extraordinary in a 64-year-old because P2s are usually in children. Other than that, she walked 300 meters, which is not enough, not even for 64 years old. And uh, we started our imaging. And you can see here, there is a, uh, going from left to right, there is a ventilation scintigram. There's a perfusion scintigram here, which are fairly normal, just some speckles on the perfusion, but never one thought of chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. There's no segmental abnormalities. Then there's the CT scan and the CT angiogram and the conventional pulmonary angiography with the AP right and left and the lateral right and left projections showing no segmental def perfusion defects. And so this is really the, the package you have to do to understand pulmonary vascular disease. We, we moved on to some laboratory tests and you, you can see those here. I have to put my glasses on, Pro B&B 1,122, and all other measurements were negative. And we usually do scleroderma screening, we look at uh, uh, the thyroid gland, you see the TSH here, and we also look at coagulation. The LA key stands for lupus anticoagulant, was negative. Of course, in this situation, the, the, the echocardiography had suggested maybe pulmonary hypertension. We did an invasive measurement. And the emphasis in this case is really on the response to treatment. And this is why I show you here the invasive hemodynamic measurements with a pulmonary arterial pressure of 92 over 43, 56 mean. In this case, the wedge pressure was 9, which makes it precapillary pulmonary hypertension. And the resistance with a cardiac output of three liters per minute accounts for 1,400 dynes, which is the arbitrary units of the pulmonary vascular resistance. And there was no response when nitric oxide was given. Can I just interrupt here? <clears throat> what would the importance be of response? Well, if, the, if you are a responder, uh, you are in the very good situation of having an excellent prognosis with a very cheap medication with calcium antagonists. I would give you 720 milligrams of diltiazem, probably diltiazem. And, um, and you would come back to me after, after one, one or two months and we would redo the, the hemodynamics and you, would, <coughs> you have a 20% chance of being at the level of full diltiazem dose, which would be almost normal. This, this is the typical responder. We think today that an NO responder is a very important subset of pulmonary hypertension with excellent prognosis. And we, we don't really understand what makes them NO responders, but there may be molecular mechanisms that we will discover. So you have to wait. <clears throat> Let's go on with the case. So 
putting this together, what do you think would be the diagnosis? So there's no segmental abnormalities, no chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension in a 64-year-old with a systolic pap of 90 and pre-capillary pH. Yeah, well, it's a pre-capillary uh, capillary problem. Of course, we haven't seen the echo, but um, since uh, I would assume the left ventricle function was normal, as we discussed yes. earlier, uh, she still has a high BNP, so this does point to right heart disease. We have the information from the hemodynamics that it's pre-capillary, and it doesn't seem as if it seems to be chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, so it probably is some form of idiopathic uh, pulmonary arterial well, hypertension. Well, yes, uh, he, uh, Tom and me worked together <coughs> for a long time, and we've discussed this case, but you, of course, point out the correct diagnosis. And the purpose of this case is not the diagnostic pathway, which I only uh, wanted to give you an idea of, but it's really what happened afterwards. And watch this now. So, how to treat. Some of you may know that there is a new drug out there which uh, has a very specific binding capacity to the endothelin A and B receptors, and this is macitentan. That has really recently been studied in a very large trial that was called Seraphine trial and was very unique in, in pursuing a very ambitious morbidity mortality endpoint. And this is a slide illustrating this novel and robust morbidity mortality primary endpoint that's composed of death, atrial septostomy, lung transplantation, uh, the initiation of prostacycins, and then the other worsening, and you see here the, the red boxes is whatever was labeled as other worsening. And I, I, I'm, I'm immediately going to the results because it's, it's very well known. After almost three years of treating over 700 patients, the 10 milligram dose created a 45% risk reduction. And I, I have another slide illustrating uh, that um, uh, Masitentan even worked on background treatment it, it, it even worked when a patient was on a background treatment. And look at our patient. She, uh, this is a, a, a diagram showing six minute walking distance and anti-pro BNP. And uh, you can see the blue line is the six minute walking test that increased from 400 to 550 meters, from 350 to 450 precisely. And the BNP, which is the red line, went down from 900 to normal. This is really remarkable. And if you look at her hemodynamics, which we, of course, uh, repeated after a period of six months, you see the, the PA mean is 36 now, the wage is nine as it was, the PBR has come down. So is this a miracle? Well, it's an, I mean, in my eyes, this is a true miracle because if you look at these patients, it's usually a progressive disease. Uh, treatment can you know, prolong life, we know that, but uh, very rarely would you see patients who really benefit uh, to that extent. And, um, I don't know, how was she doing clinically? Very good. They're very excellent. We've seen her recently. And I can, I can show you what, what, what the physician uh, put in the chart. <coughs> her, she, of course, she, she's not um, uh, sent out to, to be seen by anyone. You know, she's returning to our unit. And it was noted that, uh, well, she's doing fine. She couldn't find her cell phone when she was called by my <laughs> nurse. Well, this is not related to... Yeah, this is the kind of documentation we do nowadays. Right. Yeah. And then she... Well, this is a whole page of this visit, right? Okay. And, um, well, she's fine. She, she, she's more depressed, you know, mm -hmm. that this is the problem. So, obviously, there is some intrinsic depression as yeah. well. But I think, uh, you know, it clearly shows that patients can benefit and that pharmaceutical drugs do work and that, um, you know, uh, there seems to be something in the drug that uh, is able to help patients. Um, do you think it will help all patients or is just a selective group of patients will benefit to that extent? Well, the, the statistics, I showed you the statistics, and um, this is a particular beneficial yeah. story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't have so much right. experience, but um, uh, we're following our patients very closely to to see, you can never exclude in a single case that it is the single case that makes the success of the story. But but I would believe so. I mean, I can uh, only reiterate because uh, you know I've seen the echoes of this patient and the function has 
of the right ventricle has improved. Uh, the pulmonary pressure is also much less now on the echo. And um, you know, if you look at the echo, it's very difficult to even say that she has pulmonary hypertension. Um, I think that you know the the other issue that I'd like to make in this patient is that uh, she has a typical pattern of long uh, delay until we actually made the diagnosis. Um, do you want to comment on the problems of that, maybe? Well, there is no screening for pulmonary hypertension unless there is a patient with scleroderma. But you'd have to cuff hundreds of patients to find a single case of pulmonary arterial hypertension. So the, the recommendation is if you have a patient with scleroderma, which this patient didn't have, follow them very closely once uh, in every year you have to do echo and uh, every half a year lung function and uh, maybe do an echo every half a year as well. Okay, I think this clearly shows uh, um, a medical, I would say, miracle or at least a case where a patient really, really was lucky to receive the treatment that helped her. Um, I think uh, it should just remind us that, you know, uh, we obviously have to find these patients uh, and uh, bring them to the treatment and obviously we need to evaluate the patients as well because it's not very easy to really make the diagnosis. Uh, you have to have the suspicion and you need a very thorough workup to find the problem and uh, do these tests uh, and see which treatment would actually be uh, ideal for the patient. Okay, I think this wraps up our first case. Thank you very much for watching and uh, please stay with us when we come with our next case which is going to also deal with a medical miracle, this time of a pregnant patient. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Irene.